This Bible question is an excerpt from our television program, What Do the Scriptures Say? We hope that it will enrich your spiritual life, and we hope that you'll come back to www.scripturesay.com to find answers to your Bible questions. Thank you. And the last parable, Luke 19, verse 11 and following. While they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. So he said, a nobleman went, nobleman went, on a, went to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then return. And he called ten of his slaves and gave them ten minas and said to them, do business with this until I come back. But his citizens hated him and sent him a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that the slaves to whom he had given money be called to him so that he might know what business they had done. The first appeared, saying, Master, your mina has made ten more minas. And he said to him, Well done, good slave, because you have been faithful in a very little thing, you are to be an authority over ten cities. The second came saying, Your mina master has made five minas. And he said to him also, You are to be over five cities. Another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have put away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are an exacting man. You take up what, what you do not lay down and reap where you do not sow. He said to him, by your word, by your own words, I will judge you, you worthless slave. Did you know that I am an exacting man, taking up what I did not lay down and reaping what I did not sow? Then why did you not put my money in the bank, and having come, I would have collected it with interest? Then he said to the bystanders, Take the mina away from him and give to the one who has ten minas. And they said to him, Master, he has ten minas already. I tell, you, I tell you that everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. But these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them in my presence. Okay, I've got to hurry to get through this at the end. This is the last parable that illustrates a point we've made throughout all of the parables. Probably came from a true story. Probably was something of historical record. Uh, it was known, Archelaus, the uh, son of, uh, of Caesar, went to uh, Rome on behalf of his father to try to get this kingdom in Jerusalem. This very circumstance happened when Jesus was a small boy. It was a matter of historical knowledge, and it was a matter of knowledge among those who would live in Jerusalem. And this, this is very, very similar to the story of the parable of the talents, although, uh, except there's a, there, there's a big difference. A talent was... Uh, uh, 20 years worth of earning. Amina was about three months. What this was to illustrate was that Jesus is going to go away and his kingdom is going to come, but it's not going to be immediately apparent that his kingdom arrives. And while he's gone, his disciples are to make good use of what it is that he gives them to use. The talents, the ability that Jesus gives is to be used in faithfulness until he returns. And when he returns, judgment will be made and people will be held accountable. So there's great similarity between Matthew 25 and uh, this particular place. They are citizens of the kingdom. Uh, I'm going to talk about a summary of all of these parables when we come back right after this. What this parable does for us is it explains how God's kingdom would not appear immediately, wouldn't be perceived as, a, as an earthly kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. If we had time, we'd look at Acts chapter 2, verses 30 through 36, where 
Jesus is raised to the throne of God and immediately he, he reigns in his kingdom, but it's a spiritual kingdom. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 through 23, God brought about in Christ his kingdom and he reigns on his throne. 1 Peter 3 and verse 25 Jesus is at the right hand of the throne of God. That's where he reigns today. When he comes back, it's judgment day. The kingdom is going to spread according to the wheats and the tares with, uh, with great effectiveness throughout the world. It would start out small like a mustard seed. And sometimes its influence would be imperceptible, like the leaven. Its growth is beyond our ability to comprehend, like the growing seed. But if you find it, it is of great value, like the pearl of great price. You can even stumble across it, the hidden treasure. It's going to bring in all kinds, like the parable of the dragnet. But the parable will be, the, the kingdom will be taken away from those who should have appreciated it, like the wicked vine dressers and the wedding feast and the barren fig tree and the great supper and will be given to those who appreciate it. The disciples of the kingdom are to be busy sowing the seed, the parable of the sower tells us. They are instructed in the ways of the kingdom and they have treasure both old and new, like the parable of the householder. They are to be merciful like the unforgiven servant illustrates. They are to be free from a mercenary spirit like the labors of the vineyard illustrates. They are to do the will of the father as the two sons parable illustrates. They are not to be like the foolish virgin, virgins. They are to be like the wise virgins. They are to be productive while they are here, like the parable of the talents and the minas. They are to show gratitude for their salvation, like the parable of the unworthy servants and the debtors. They are to love their neighbor and do good, like the parable of the good Samaritan. They are to uh, be persistent in their prayers, like the parable of the friend at midnight and the persistent widow. They are to be aware of uh, that one's life does not consist in riches, like the parable of the rich fool. They are to take the lowest place. They are to be humble. They are not to pray with arrogance, like the Pharisee. They are to make proper use of material wealth, like the parable of the unjust steward. And yet, through all of this, they are to realize that they are unworthy like the unprofitable servants. They are to realize that the king desires us like the parable of the lost sheep and lost coin and our heavenly father loves us beyond any comparison that we can make in this world. Wish we had some more time to look at parables. I hope that has helped you in your study. Next week we'll look at some more of your interesting questions, call or write to us if you have a question, and we'll see you next week on What Do the Scriptures Say? Bye-bye. We thank you for your interest in What Do the Scriptures Say? We hope that you will come back to ScripturesSay.com often for answers to your Bible questions. See you then.